Hello, this is the Non-Qualified Evangelist, episode number 22. We're covering Genesis chapters 48 and 49. Previously, Joseph and Jacob, they are finally reunited. Joseph brings his brothers to the side and he says, hey, listen, the natives here in Egypt, they can get a little bit restless. They do not like Hebrews. So I need you to select among yourselves the five least impressive of you and come with me. We're going to, I'm going to introduce you to Pharaoh. And he does. And Pharaoh looks at him and says, yeah, if these guys can do cattle, then they can do my cattle too. It's wonderful. So what ends up happening is as these people get hungry, they start offering money, livestock, their land. Then they offer themselves. Joseph agrees to provide them seed in exchange for 20% of whatever their land produces. They're ecstatic. They praise him. How fantastic this guy saved us. As Jacob prepares to die, he calls Joseph. He says, Joseph, I have a very important thing I need you to do. And I'm going to have you swear by holding my thigh. And you're going to take my body out of Egypt. And you're going to bury me in the cave of Mashpelah where my family is. Joseph agrees. And then that's the end of the story. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this book. Thank you for understanding. Please continue to guide us. Amen. This is 48. And it came to pass after these things that someone said to Joseph, Behold, your father is ill. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him. Jacob was told, Behold, your son Joseph has come to you. So Israel exerted himself and sat up on the bed. Jacob said to Joseph, El Shaddai had appeared to me in Luz, in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me. He said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and numerous. I will make you a congregation of nations, and I will give this land to your offspring after you as an eternal possession. And now, your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt before my coming to you in Egypt shall be mine. Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine, like Reuben and Simeon. But progeny born to you after them shall be yours. They will be included under the name of their brothers with regard to their inheritance. But as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died on me in the land of Canaan on the road, while there was still a stretch of land to go to Ephrath, and I buried her there on the road to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons, and he said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, These are my sons whom God has given me here. He said, Bring them to me, if you please, and I will bless them. Now Israel's eyes were heavy with age, and he could not see. So he brought them near him, and he kissed them and hugged them. Israel said to Joseph, I dared not accept the thought that I would see your face. And here God has shown me even your offspring. Joseph then removed them from his knee and he prostrated himself with his face toward the ground. Joseph took the two of them, Ephraim with his right hand to Israel's left and Manasseh with his left to Israel's right. And he drew close to him. But Israel extended his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head as though he was the younger and his left hand on Manasseh's head. He maneuvered his hands, for Manasseh was the firstborn. He blessed Joseph, and he said, O God, before whom my forefathers Abraham and Isaac walked, God who shepherds me from my inception until this day, may the angel who redeems me from all evil bless the lads, and may my name be declared upon them, and the names of my forefathers Abraham and Isaac. And may they proliferate abundantly like fish within the land. Joseph saw that his father was placing his right hand on Ephraim's head, and it displeased him. So he supported his father's hand to remove it from upon Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, father, for this is the firstborn. Place your right hand on his head. But his father refused, saying, I know, my son, I know. He too will become a people, and he too will become great. Yet his younger brother shall become greater than he, and his offspring's fame will fill the nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you shall Israel bless, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and like Manasseh. And he put Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am about to die. God will be with you and will bring you back to the land of your fathers. And as for me, I have given you Shechem, one portion more than your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Genesis 49. Then Jacob called for his sons and said, Assemble yourselves, and I will tell you what will befall you in the end of days. Gather yourselves and listen, O sons of Jacob, 
and listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my strength, and my initial vigor. Foremost in rank and foremost in power. Water-like impetuosity. You cannot be foremost because you mounted your father's bed. Then you desecrated him who ascended my couch. Simeon and Levi are comrades. Their weaponry is a stolen craft. Into their conspiracy may my soul not enter. With their congregation do not join, O my honor. For in their rage they murdered people, and at their whim they hamstrung an ox. Accursed is their rage, for it is intense, and their wrath, for it is harsh. I will separate them within Jacob, and I will disperse them in Israel. Judah, you, your brother, shall acknowledge. Your hand will be at your enemy's nape. Your father's sons will prostrate themselves to you. A lion cub is Judah. From the prey, my son, you elevated yourself. He crouches, lies down like a lion, and like an awesome lion who dares rouse him. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a scholar from among his descendants, until Shiloh shall arrive, and his will be an assemblage of nations. He will tie his donkey to the vine, to the vine branch his donkey's foal. He will launder his garments in wine, and his robe in the blood of grapes, red-eyed from wine, and white-toothed from milk. Zebulun shall settle by seashores. He shall be at the ship's harbor, and his last border will reach Zidon. Issachar is a strong-boned donkey. He rests between the boundaries. He saw tranquility, that it was good, and the land, that it was pleasant. Yet he bent his shoulder to bear, and he became an indentured laborer. Dan will avenge his people. The tribes of Israel will be united as one. Dan will be a serpent on the highway. A viper by the path that bites a horse's heels, so its rider falls backward. For your salvation do I long, O Hashem. Gad will recruit a regiment, and it will retreat on its heel. From Asher, his bread will have richness, and he will provide kingly delicacies. Naphtali is a hind let loose, who delivers beautiful sayings. A charming son is Joseph, a charming son to the eye. Each of the daughters climbed heights to gaze. They embittered him and became antagonists. The arrow-tongued men hated him, but his bow was firmly in place, and his arms were gilded from the hands of the mighty power of Jacob. From there he shepherded the stone of Israel. That was from the God of your father, and he will help you, and with Shaddai, and he will bless you with blessings of heaven from above, blessings of the deep crouching below, Blessings of the bosom and womb. The blessings of your father surpass the blessings of my parents to the endless bounds of the world's hills. Let them be upon Joseph's head and upon the head of the exile from his brothers. Benjamin is a predatory wolf. In the morning he will devour prey, and in the evening he will distribute spoils. All these are the tribes of Israel, twelve, and this is what their father spoke to them. And he blessed them. He blessed each according to his appropriate blessing. Then he instructed them and said to them, I shall be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Mashpelah, which faces Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite as a burial estate. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. Purchase of the field and the cave within it was from the sons of Heth. When Jacob finished instructing his sons, he drew his feet onto the bed. He expired and was gathered to his people. Okay, this is 4849. Uh, We're talking about blessing right now. I think the assumption is that the right hand is used to bless the firstborn. The left hand is used to bless anybody else. The younger is not the one who is supposed to inherit the blessing. So let's review. Ishmael is Abraham's firstborn, and he was kicked out. Esau is Isaac's firstborn, and he was cheated out of his inheritance and his birthright. Reuben is Jacob's firstborn. Reuben had an affair with his dad's wife. Sarah, her firstborn was Isaac. Isaac was blessed by God, knew God, and the blessing continued from Abraham to Isaac. Now, Rebekah loves Jacob. He's the one that receives the blessing. He knows God. Now, finally, Rachel. 
Rachel was the loved wife of Jacob, and her son Joseph is the one that receives this blessing now. This, I think, is where we see that God values authenticity more than, like, I was born first. There is a story here about Shechem that, that I'm skipping because we have to talk about the blessings. Reuben absolutely loses the top seat at the table because of this whole affair thing. Jacob says, you don't think. <laughs> You've desecrated my bed. What, what are you thinking? Simeon and Levi. Now, these are the two guys who went and attacked Shechem. These two, apparently, they are vengeful. They are rageful. They are angry. They are violent. They attack this animal or something. In either case, Jacob looks at them after a lifetime and says, Whew, you guys are too much. Number one, you're not getting any land. You're out of your mind. Number two, so I'm going to separate you guys and I'm going to disperse you throughout the entire area of Israel. Jacob commends Judah. He says, you know what? You lifted yourself up, son. You did the right thing. You're an impressive person. People are going to bow down to you. Kings and scholars, they're coming from you. Shiloh is a Hebrew word, just like Hashem. And it says, this is the person who God has chosen. They would call him, uh, this person the chosen one, the anointed, the Messiah. And when this person gets here, what he's going to do is ev everybody's going to be, it's going to be one kingdom. There's some beautiful poetry there about the wine and the milk. I, I feel like that just speaks to the wealth that's going to come from this line. He continues with Sebulun and Issachar and all these guys. He gets to Joseph. He says, you know what, Joseph, you're beautiful. You're strong. He says, Joseph, the blessing that I received from my father surpassed my father. I want that for you now, Joseph, that your blessing will be greater than mine. Finally, Benjamin will be a warrior. He reminds them when he dies, he needs to be taken to the cave of Mashpelah. And the beautiful story of Jacob, multiple interactions with the divine, the, the wrestling with the divine man that earned him the name Israel. He's dead. It's over. There is one chapter left. Next episode, we're going to do a little brief cover of Genesis. We're going to wrap it up and continue right into Exodus. I'm having the most fun ever. I hope you are too. Stick with us. The NQE is out. <music> <laughs>